Hello, this is Raziel Cohen with ndftraining.com, and today we're going to look at the Recover Tactical 2020 Glock Stabilizing Brace. Every now and then on this channel, someone sends me something incredibly cool and it makes me ex like super excited to be able to share with you guys. Now, this is not gonna be the first video you've probably seen on this brace system and this chassis system for Glocks. However, when I was doing research before I decided to put this video together, I noticed that the most recent reviews or discussions about this product were around a year to two years ago. And I think that a lot of those videos were bringing up a lot of valid points, but they weren't giving the, the company enough credit for modifications and adjustments and additions they made to this platform to kind of take away some of the concerns that people previously had about this setup. So in the past, there were a few like small minor complaints about what people wish they could have done better. And I think Recovery Tactical really did all of it. They actually fixed the majority of those issues to make th make this a so much better product than what it was a year to two years ago. And I wanted to kind of do an update video to give a fair rundown of what this product is and why I absolutely freaking think this is awesome. It's a very, very cool setup. There are very few products that I'm able to test out and review that get me as hyped as what this did. And uh, yeah, I think we should get just right into it. So let's go through an overview first. This is a Glock chassis system um, for your Glock. Now, they do make other versions for different pistols and different formats and different settings, but this is the one that I got. What's really cool about it, to my understanding, is that it fits with a large variety of Glocks. So it's not just like you're getting one for the Glock 19, one for the Glock 17, one for the Glock 26. They, they're they able to fit a, a, a large majority of the Glock system uh, like platforms. Obviously, check on the website to make sure that you're getting the right one for you, um, but it, it's a multi-purpose item. So the reason why, to start off of why I like it, is that if you're someone who wanted to get a pistol caliber carbine, or if you wanted to get a nine millimeter platform like setup, the most affordable in regards to reliability that you might be able to get will start off at around $400 because you're getting a new platform. And along with that new platform, there's a new um, kind of way that the, the firearm works, a new way to clean it, a new manual of arms. And because of that, you could be spending a lot of time and money and training practicing a new platform. Now, when you get something like this, you're getting the exact same Glock that you know and love, the reliability that you know and love, and all the same stuff that you already know and love without needing to change much, except getting a chassis system that's able to kind of set up this whole thing to be so much cooler um, and so much more effective. So. This is just something that I think is really cool for someone that wants to use it for home defense, for close quarter, uh, like close quarter stuff, whether that be uh, for in, within a vehicle uh, or within like um, tight spaces. This is a very, very, very cool and very effective setup. And although I'm probably hyping it already a lot, it's because I already run it and absolutely love it. Like it's it's really nice. So now let's go through some of the concerns. I'll start off with the concerns that some people had with the system and how they've remedied it um, since the previous videos that I've seen. Now, one thing that I've seen is that they said that this area right over here where the cheek goes um, was too low and it felt like it was too difficult to be able to use your standard RMR to be able to look through it. Now. Without this piece, this piece is one of the adjustments you're able to get, one of the new setups you're able to get. It's a cheek riser that you're able to use. Now, with that cheek riser, you won't be able to use the standard RMR on your Glock anymore, but you will be able to add an optic. So this is other mounting system, is a system you're able to use to mount a dedicated optic. I'll speak about the optic setup that I have here in a second, but you could go from using the RMR that you had to setting it up where it would have an optic system, so you don't even need to worry about the RMR anymore, and you're able to get a higher, more comfortable uh, rise on that setup. Besides for that, people also might have complained that it might have been a shorter length of pull or that this might have been a little bit too sharp, but they've also come out, this is the BE20, it's a brace extension that's able to go onto the back of the, the platform to be able to make it more comfortable to be able to use. So that already resolves the majority of the issues that people said they were having, and it's such small adjustments that they were able to make that make the system so much nicer. Um, the back over here is a folding stock. It folds in a way that it does click in place, but you have to lift it and pull it off to the side so It'll really stay snug when it locks in place. You might see wiggle. There is absolutely no wiggle when this is actually firing. Um, and it was very, very comfortable to be able to use. And again, very compact. This was able to fit in one of my Pelican cases. It's like a small, small case. In any backpack, anything that you're using, this will be able to work very nicely. And again, I've really enjoyed being able to shoot it. Now, a part of what this was is me being able to shoot consistently 100 yards with what, what I never thought I'd be able to do with a standard pistol. This stabilizer now makes it something that's capable of being able to be done. And it really elevates, again, the platform of what this is able to be used for. So now, when you put your Glock into this chassis, there's a single screw that you screw in to hold it all in place, as well as what's 
what officially is an angled uh, like vertical grip or an angled grip in general. But what this is classified as is actually a storage location for your magazine. The reason why that's important is that in certain states, having a vertical grip here will make this into an SBR. Some states might require that if it's gonna be classified as an other or as a pistol, it might need a vertical foregrip. There's a lot of different legalities. State to state, it's very complicated, so I won't be able to get into that. But the idea is that this is classified as just a storage area for your spare magazine. So it's just friction fit. So when you're holding it, you're firing, 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 you empty out the magazine, pull out directly, stick it into the new, stick it in for a new magazine, and that's pretty much it. Now, a part of what I'll, what I'll say about this is that when this Glock, when your pistol is in this chassis system, it's no longer a Glock. It's a mixture between a Glock and a rifle. So because of that, there are certain things you have to change up a little bit because it won't work conventionally as a regular pistol would. For example, if I'm firing the gun like this, usually with a pistol, you would be firing, firing, firing. You'd break your grip slightly to be able to hit the magazine release. You'd drop the magazine and then reload. You can't do that with this because when you're doing that, your brace is now here. So if I wanna to try to break my grip, it's naturally gonna hit my forearm a little bit and it makes it difficult. So what I've seen works for myself is that you'll fire. When you bring your support end over, you'll use your support hand thumb to hit the magazine release, which will drop the magazine. You'll then grab the spare, insert it into the gun, and then you're ready to go again. So it's not gonna be as conventional as a regular reload because it's not a conventional setup for this pistol. That's just the way that it works. So well, another thing that I think is very important to mention is that they really well designed this angled grip because you must, must have a hand stop of some kind because when I'm pointing it, you could see how my hand is able to go right in front of the barrel. Now, being that I'm in the state of New Jersey, the gun that's currently in this setup is not a real firearm because it's for demonstration purposes. Although to my knowledge, this is perfectly legal in New Jersey. A lot of people I spoke to said that it's still somewhat of a gray area um, in regards to just my personal state's legalities. So for this demonstration, this is a, um, a demonstration gun. However, I was using it and running it with this um, when I was in another state that was perfectly legal and there was no questions about legalities. And I kept the red dot on here. So now if you look over here, this is one of the options that they offer. They offer a high and low mount that pretty much attaches to the back of your slide that makes it easier to rack. So you can rack it really, really simply, really nicely. And I just use a whole open hand and it worked really, really great. Um, if you have an RMR, you don't need to use that. I just used my RMR to be able to rack it. Your RMR should perfectly be able to handle that. This happens to be the, the Holosun 508T. Um, so you don't need to put that piece on if you already have a red dot on it. Um, for this gun, just as a demonstration, um, it doesn't have a RMR, it doesn't have a red dot. So being able to use that as a racking system uh, worked really well. Now, moving to the front, you can see that there's an area where you could attach a flashlight. The flashlight that I'm using here, again, is just for demonstration, but if you wanna make this like kind of a night vision setup, um, or if you're going to use this with a respirator or a gas mask, it was very easy to run um, using a gas mask. Now, the reality is, there's pretty much no platform I've tried that made gas masks comfortable. They're all still somewhat complicated to be able to run, but this makes it easier. So this is a stream light that has a green laser attached to the bottom that you can see over there. So being able to run this um, with night vision, if you're gonna set this up as an IR setup, um, or if you're just gonna set it up in a gas mask and you want to be able to have a laser, it works really nicely. And you could see how the optic wraps around. This is an attachment that they have. You can mount a red dot. I put a 193 riser on this that again, made it much easier with um, being able to use a respirator and it worked very well. I think that I still might go back to a standard red dot because I think I ran out of elevation when I was adjusting the weight of the ammunition I was using to this optic. Um, I'm going to test it a little bit more, but I think I needed to go a little bit lower um, because I was going to zero it at 25 yards. So if it ran out of elevation just because of the height and the weight of the bullet, I might need to change the mounting setup that I'm using. But in the footage that you're seeing, I was able to use it perfectly efficiently. Slight um, height over bore adjustment, which is natural because that's the height over the bore is, is going to be pretty high, uh, but it definitely worked uh, well. On the opposite side as well, there's another area to be able to mount. So whether that be you want to mount something else or if you want to go right-handed to left-handed, um, that's how that works on that side. And again, overall, a very nice and compact system to be able to use for, again, home defense, close quarters, or just something within small environments, I think is really cool. This is something that I'm definitely going to be running a lot more of. It was a very, very fun system to run. Again, it, shooting at a distance was just so cool to be able to run consistently. Again, like it's not, some people are very capable of being able to use a pistol at 100 yards. It's not realistic, it's not recommended, um, but they're able to do it. But using this actually makes it something that would be 
far within its capabilities of accuracy. The only times I missed was when I had an incorrect trigger pull or I wasn't paying attention to my sight, which means consistently, this is able to like continuously hit and hit and hit. And it was just so much fun to be able to run. So if you're looking for something like this at a very good price, it's a very good price for a gun that you already have. So you don't need to learn a new manual of arms. It's a Glock, which means that it's consistent, it's reliable, and you're just adding it into a chassis system that makes it so much more fun to be able to use, as well as also if you want to use it for home defense and you might have a smaller framed person in your home that the pistol recoil alone might be a little bit tough and going to a rifle might not be as realistic for you. Having something like this for home defense, I think is really cool. And again, the light setup and the uh, optic setup, I think is really nice. As a side note, by the way, when you're mounting your flashlight, make sure that you check where the brace closes because it could end up on like on this one, I have the stream light, I could end up hitting one of the toggles and activating it accidentally. So just make sure you measure that out. Um, but again, if you're looking for something that's really fun to run and really cool and affordable. I think that's a really big key word here. You could definitely check this out. This is the Recovery Tactical 2020. And I think it's well worth the money for a lot of people who might be looking for a PCC or a format to be able to get their Glock to do something different. I'm going to show you guys a few more accessories before we continue and just kind of give you a few little bits of input in regards to what I think that can make this setup go even better. So one of the things that they offer is they give you this little piece over here that ends up being a holster that you're able to run. So you're able to actually attach this to a paddle holster that they provide. So this is the paddle holster right over here and it attaches and works, uh, it, it works fine. I'm personally not a fan of paddle holsters. So what I started doing, which it's probably gonna work out fine, I have a Safari Land belt attachment that I'm just drilling a hole in and modifying a little bit just so I know it's a little bit more stable. So if you're going to use it, my personal opinion is that these paddle holsters don't usually work great it works fine, but I wouldn't really want to trust my life to it. So I'm trying to modify this Safari Land attachment to be able to make it work a little bit better. So I think it would be very cool if they offered um, in the future different of, of like varieties of holster choices that you could use to be able to make this more universal. Um, so it works fine. I'm just going to modify it to see if that's something that would work out. They also include this bungee. So this bungee is going to be used as a sling, which does work very nicely. But here comes the, the other part of it is that since this is a Glock, it doesn't have a safety like an AR-15. So since my manual of arms in my head is if I'm using this kind of like a rifle, I caught myself trying to like hit the safety to like, like on an AR-15 to put it back in safe, but it doesn't have that. So reholstering it is really something that's safe. So using this bungee as a casual sling is fine, but I think that its main value is to keep it towards your body, but not something that you'd kind of sling behind your back because that doesn't leave um, a lot of options for the trigger for something to go in and maybe potentially discharge. So this is good and I like it. I like that it's minimalistic, but I would use it only when you're in conjunction of using it with a holster so there isn't any risk of there being an accidental discharge. The only other thing I wish they would do, which is not really a difficult fix, I think it's something that's well within their capabilities already, is that when I was firing this gun, I was, again, I was able to, within my cadence of being able to fire, I didn't see any major issue with it, but there's going to be flickering because every time there's a recoil, there's a little bit of a wiggle with the optic over there because it's being mounted from one singular point. If they would use this exact same mounting setup, but make it a two, uh, like, I don't know if the word is bracket, but a two mounted option where it'll mount on both sides, which have the mount capabilities, then that way it would be more of a U-shaped clamp to both sides of the stabilizer. And I think that would help the optic a lot more with regards to not seeing that wiggle. Did it matter? Not really. I was perfectly able to shoot this gun without that being a dramatic issue, but I didn't notice it. So having something that might mount to both sides, which I don't think is a very difficult uh, modification for them to be able to do, I think would really elevate this. So between this and the holster, I think it's really, really, really a perfect setup. So again, this works fine. Um, would I keep this? Absolutely. Am I going to keep running it? Absolutely. Would I like to see that mount go over to both sides? I really think that would make a big difference with regards to having less wiggle in the optic. And then also seeing another option in regards to holster mounting options, I think would be really nice as well. And I don't think those are really big deals as well as also maybe some aftermarket companies maybe starting to come out with those. And again, really love the setup, really loved running it. Uh, really excited to do more testing with it. If you have any questions on this, if you'd like to see me run this in a certain format or in a certain environment that you think would be interesting, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. This is Rosiel Cohen with NDFTraining.com. Thank you for watching.